We are thankful to our Father for the Monday team led by Apostle Debran, Apostle Denise, and all those who are praying with them. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for sparing the lives of multitudes in the Carolinas and the Atlantic Gulf. We ask you to comfort the families that have lost people to Hurricane Florence after March. Father, we pray that your name be glorified across the world. As we see three strong men emerge in the air trim and we see the shakings of the European Union and the shakings of the Vatican, as we know that things are about to be, I pray that your church shall come to a place where we are not carried away, where we are not allowed, we do not allow mystery Babylon to suck us in. I pray, Father, your church shall learn to be separate unto you so that we can engage with and impart the world with your spirit and your grace. And this comes through discovery and walking in our spiritual gifts. Have your way, Father. I pray that there will be understanding with the communication of your word. Thank you for answering our prayer, and we pray that all the intercessors who stand on the watch day by day, you bless everyone. Holy Spirit, we pray for all trans, that the things of Yeshua be made known to his church. In Yeshua's mighty name, we are praying. Amen and amen. We're thankful to the Father for every one of you who has been part of the ongoing training on spiritual gifts. Uh, I want to say this. The training is not for training's sake. The training is for purpose of application. That we come to a place of understand when we say organic church, when we say organism, what do we mean? We mean that every single saint is not a statistic to be counted as part of membership of this church or that church. So that men of God, in movement of God in quote, who use fellow saints to boast, I have 10,000 members, I have 1,000 members, I have 300 members. The cause on spiritual gifts shows us that in his mind's eye, when Elohim was creating us, and when he was redeeming us, when the Lamb was slain before the foundation of the wall, he had already counted that George Akalano would be this in his body. And for which purpose he put certain gifts in this being to take my place in the organic body. So also passed to grace. So also teacher Stephanie. So also Apostle Deborah. Apostle Denise. So also Apostle Ron. Apostle Candace. Apostle, you know, Brenda. So also everyone that you know who is part of what we're doing. And that's not all. We are not the only remnant. There are other remnants. They are, they are just as there are 12 tribes of Israel. The same Israel, 12 tribes. Just as there are 12 apostles that he chose, the Father has various kingdom streams that are so called, and their job is not to denominate his truth and lock it away within themselves. No, to make it manifest that every saint has a purpose for creation. There's a purpose for redemption. It is exemplified by the basket of gifts that are put into that sin so that you take your place in the organic body so that we don't just do church as in organization people join or uh, buildings people go into or certain holidays we are church we are church when you discover your gift and calling and when you flow in it releasing it to people and receiving that giving to other people for you. That's what we mean by organism, by what every joy supplies. The body makes increase of itself in love. And I want to thank the Father that he is going the extra way to help us from teaching on Facebook alone all these years, since 2009. Teaching on Facebook alone. In 2013, four years later, the Lord added free conference calling and we began to have what we have now, Daybreak with the King, 2013. And by His grace, the Father has now added to us a video teaching series 
Facebook Live. And through that, we also have YouTube. And tell me, excuse any brother or sister will have to remain in religion. Tell me an excuse a brother or sister will have to remain in ignorance. So it means that ignorance is now a choice. You choose to be ignorant, my people perish for lack of knowledge. You choose light, you shall know the truth. And what will the truth do to you? It shall set you free. So you can begin to function. So we got to go on to the other gifts. And there are two lessons today that will take a wide range. These two lessons will take us from number 17 to number, you know, 31, 30, 31, so to say, it will kind of bring it all together. So let's see what he said in the book of um, um, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 28, and Elohim had said some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healing, helps, government, diversities of tongues. Now, some of the things have been dealt with already. Let's focus on the ones that are not dealt with that are here. 17 is helps. Men and brethren, helps is the gift to graciously support a vision committed to another person. You take it as your own. It's a gift. It's a grace. Those who have this gift are valuable in the church. In fact, without them, many things will not work. Ability is an Elohim-given ability. A vision is given to another person, but the moment you come into that vision, you see a jumping in your spirit that this is Elohim's vision. It's not about the person is giving it to. You come alongside, you take your place. So it's a supportive gift. And it's so powerful. It's so necessary. Yeshua enjoyed the ministry of women who stood with him in supportive capacity in Luke 8. He saw them. We're told that as he went about throughout the city and villages, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of Elohim, and the twelve were with him, listen to this, him and the twelve were, a certain woman, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom were seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Herod, Steward, and Susanna, and many others, ministered unto him of their substance. They had the gift of helps, and they deployed it to take care of the physical needs of Yeshua and his apostles so that they can concentrate. We've been told about Phoebe the deaconess. She had a ministry of helps, as you see in Romans chapter 6, 16, verse 1 to 9, and other people, men and brethren, were told that we need to understand how these things pan out. Then there are two other gifts that we need to mention, number 18 and 19, some people tend to mix them up. Romans 12, 8. And Romans, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 28. Romans 12, 8 says, Or he that exalted on exhortation, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showed mercy with cheerfulness. In 1 Corinthians 12, 28, we are told, and Elohim has said some in the church, first apostles, secondly prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, government, diversities of tongues. So we see here, government mentioned. Now, if you look at Romans 12, 8 and 1 Corinthians 12, 28, this gift of governments can actually be broken down into two. Government meaning the ability to take charge of things as the Lord may give. So we break it into two to find gifts number 18 and 19. 18 is leadership. The gift to lead any unit of the body into either a fresh expression or a widening or deepening of the experiences of Elohim. And that gift enables one to exercise the leadership skills that give you strategic vision. It talks about macro Grace, the grace to look at the big picture, see the vision, see the possibilities. Often there are many other gifts attached to it, such as wisdom, such as faith, that people who have this grace of leadership, this aspect of government that is about leadership, they're able to see the work, design what needs to be done, design who needs to be involved, create the platform for people to come in. On the other hand, gift number 19, administration, which is tied to the same gift of government, it differs. Administration has to do with managing. 
Managing human and material resources for optimum outcomes at the basic level or whatever level. So this gift is more like the, the one given to people who be managers, who be supervisors. It's also a supportive gift, but it's not macro-based like leadership. This is micro-based to see the smaller figures. And this gift is particularly needed for those who are going to serve like secretaries or administrators or executive assistants or personal assistants in ministries. The grace to make sure that all T's are crossed, all I's are dotted. The little things that the leader may not see, they will see it and make sure that those things are taken care of. The fine prints, they able to, when they, they can take charge of making sure that policies are implemented. Number 20 is the gift of celibacy. We hinted at it when we started. Yeshua spoke about the gift of celibacy, Matthew 19, verse 12. He said, for there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. From their mother's womb, they were eunuchs. Then there were some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. Like the Ethiopian eunuch was made a eunuch so that he could function in the court of the queen without messing up in any way, without having any desire to mess up. Then he says, there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. Now, celibacy is the gift and the grace that enables somebody, brothers or sisters, to function without having sexual impulses, to function free of those things that, you know, disturb people. They can be very focused. They don't have, they, there's no pressure in that regard. So pressure, they don't have no pressure to get married. They have no pressure to, to, to just uh, hang out with people of the opposite gender. For that reason, the things they do, they do it with singleness of eye. Even the unbelievers, even the occultists discover the power of celibacy. Whereas in some of the occult houses, to ascend to certain levels, you are told what not to do with your own wife. You are told if we're single not to even think of marriage and they, they become powerful because they are totally taken over by the gods they serve in the kingdom. This is the gift whereby somebody can operate without pressure to be like an ordinary person. No pressure to get married, no pressure to raise children and just all the fines is just desire to please the Lord, desire to make sure that the Lord is pleased because such people are married to Yeshua. Men and brethren, Paul the Apostle had this gift, and he commended the gift. He said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, from verse 2, he said from verse 1, And now, nevertheless, concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it's good for a man not to touch a woman, for his point of view. He says it's good for a man to be celibate. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, for those who have pleasure, let every man have his own wife. Let every woman have her own husband. So Paul's celibacy was one he received of the Lord. Verse 7, For I would that all men were even as I am myself, but every man has his proper gift, one after this man and one after that one. Therefore I say to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I am. But if they cannot contain, let them marry. So you don't force celibacy on anyone. The biggest problem of the Roman Catholic Church is that it forced celibacy on people who were not called, who didn't have the gift and grace. You don't force it on. You receive it from above. And if you receive it, you can serve the Lord. And in these days where everybody is now in marriage, they start talking about marriage. There's a way the church talks about marriage that people who have this calling think that they are wrong. You know, they begin to feel, oh, I might miss something. No, you've not missed something if you have this gift. It is from the Lord. It's not something somebody suggests to you. It is something you receive. And when you receive it, you know it. And you know it because you find this contentment, this peace. You're not needing anybody to make you emotionally happy because you, all your a whole life is wrapped on the Lord himself. Men and brethren, number 21, the gift of hospitality. Hospitality is the grace. Now listen, saints are supposed to be hospitable. Life, hospital 4, it says, use hospitality one to another without grudging. And 1 Timothy 3, 2 says, bishops, must be hospitable. If you're a senior minister, you must keep an open home. Okay? And it's not about having money. No, it's about an attitude. It's about a lifestyle of sharing and caring for people. But those who have this gift is beyond that ordinary one. The gift is seriously a blessing from the Lord. 
it, it, it has no bearing with the wealth level, with resource level. It's all to do with the way you apprehend yourself as one who is called to make people receive the love of the Father. If people are passing by to come in, and when people have this gift, we don't need to have people spend money for hotels, those who have gone for missions, because those who have this gift will keep their room open. And they don't mind even leaving their best room. I remember when some time missionaries came to Nigeria where we used to live. I mean, my wife and I left our bedroom, which was self-contained and everything they needed there for them to use. And I wasn't even in my wife left for them from Georgia in the United States of America. Left them to take that wife so that they don't have to worry to use the bathroom with the other people. And so that they can stay whenever they're indoors, they can spend time. The gift of hospitality is so needed in the body. You know, Paul, look at the way Paul commended one who had this gift. His name is Stephanus. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. I beseech you, brethren, you know the house of Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Achaia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saints. He said to such people, submit yourself to them, you know, and to everyone that helped us and laboured. He said they have addicted themselves. This man addicted himself and his whole household to the ministry of the saints. No, to, gift number 22 is missionary. Now, some of these gifts are what we call the implied gifts in the synopsis. They are implied. It's not like they are reaching blessing. This is spiritual gift. But when you are reading scripture, you compare scripture with scripture, you can see certain things that are there, very clearly there. The other one is missionary. Number 22. This gift is implied in scripture and it is a supernatural grace to easily fit into and function in cultures other than the one you were brought up in. You're able to go to a land, fit in there. They're eating whatever they're eating. You eat with them where they're staying. You stay there. You, not everybody has it. This gift will come with the, the, the love to travel. It will come with the love to see people, the love to meet people you have never met before, the love for adventure in a spiritual sense, to extend the frontiers of the gospel, men and brethren. And they are needed. They are needed, men and brethren. According to the various mission gifts, mission uh, fields you go into, this gift will enable you to not have to struggle, not have to wait for three, four days, one week to acculturate, because you are flowing by the grace of Elohim. And I pray the Father will help you, men and brethren. I pray every one of us will discover which of these gifts we have. Let's go on to lesson 12, the other gifts. And some of you in the master class, I want to explain something. Some of you used to say the lessons were long. So what we have done is really to cut it into two. That's really what it is. And teach it within the same time. For instance, this is one lesson. But we'll cut it to two so that you, the people will not be intimidated. In the classroom, you look at it, it's like maybe five to seven pages, you know, that has space to breathe. And you can just look at it and do it and you're not feeling too much text. So we do it and we, we post it twice. No, we are not adding extra weight to you. We simply, it's a simple way, you know, the Father showed us to make it easier for you. You read through, you do your assignments, you read through the other one later in the day, do your assignments. So let's, ex I hope that explanation comes true. Let's go to lesson 12 now. The gift of intercession. Gift number 23. This also implied every brother, every sister is called to pray. Prayer is everybody's called to pray. Prayer should be like oxygen we breathe. It should be natural with us. But intercession is a Elohim giving gift. To be able to stand in the gap for someone or people or ministry or the kingdom generally or the agenda of Elohim, stand in the gap as you receive the grace and you stand there praying in until it comes to pass. This gift is rare. In, in other words, it's not like something commonplace. Because the Father has to deal with our hearts before we can be intercessors, standing for other people, seeing them bless, seeing them go ahead. And it may look like not too much is happening with us, but the Father knows that whatever success attributed to the person up front, the intercessors are a partake of it. There it used to be said of George Muller that he had somebody called Father Nash who stood for him. He didn't even know it was when that man died that he discovered an emptiness 
Some things. He began to look. He saw that this man will stay. He'll go to a city and be praying and praying and praying. Before the man, the, the main person went for the crusade or whatever, he'll pray through war in the spirit. When he comes to this crusade, he looks at the heavens are open. Things are happening. We need intercessors again today. Who are going to stand with people on the front line of mission? Who are going to stand with the program of Elohim? Who are going to see through this man's deception that has hit the wall and pray through and say, Lord, save your remnant from being sucked up by the deception. Save your prophets who are sucked up by the deception. Some now call themselves social justice warriors. They don't care about righteousness. All they care is about, you know, justice, equity. All they care is this. They quote the Bible. Other people, everything, lock, stock, and barrel, religion, they carry. They quote the same Bible. With the intercessors who stand in the gap. That the church will not be confused. Men and brethren, and intercessors are spiritual midwives of the will of Elohim. Matthew 6, 10, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Those gifted and intercessors, they need to die to self. They are praying by the leading of the Holy Spirit. They stand in the gap and they pray. They pray. Number 24, the gift of dreaming dreams. Dreams are one of the ways Elohim communicates with his people. And in every generation, there are those Elohim who lay hold of and through them show things to come. Joseph was a man who knew how to dream dreams. He also had the gift, the other gift called interpretation. He, you know, there are people he uses. And we are told in the book of Joel 2, 28 to 29, and the last days, people, the gift of dreaming dreams will be poured out. Listen to this. At the day of Pentecost 2,000 years ago, that was fulfilled. Not all of it, part of it. How do we know it's part of it? Because Peter, watching Joel, also say, what you have seen now, the greater one is coming ahead. So dreams are given. But men and brethren, we need to beware. So what are dreams? Dreams are communication of Elohim of certain things to the one who is called while in a sleep. While in sleep, the subconscious mind is able to receive vivid images, receive communication. Men and brethren, but we need to say this. Now people need to beware. Not all dreams are messages from Elohim. Some dreams are satanic dreams. They are suggestions of Satan, which when you accept it, you rubber stamp it, Satan now goes to execute it. So be careful how you claim that your dreams are accurate. So you see that you now claim that will happen in your family. That is dangerous. That is dangerous. A lot of people are not given the gift of dreams. They're just anything that comes into their subconscious while they're asleep. They say God told them. No. There are satanic dreams that come about from Satan's suggestion, as we have just said. There are also soulish dreams that are, they come from the subconscious, the multitude of business throughout the day or weekend. There are many things happening. Many things going on. Some of them are now lodging your subconscious. And when you went to sleep, they begin to come to the fore. And that's from your soulish realm. It's not from the heavenly realm. It's not necessarily from satanic realm. So people need to understand that we got to be careful how we speak concerning dreams. If you have the gift, you have the gift. Hone it in. Develop it. If you don't have the gift, stop claiming that whatever you see happens because you may actually be giving Satan right away to oppress you. Men and brethren, we need to understand something about dreams. When you are in the subconscious, certain things come up. As I said before, it doesn't necessarily mean Elohim has spoken to you. For instance, let's say you are single and in the dream, a particular sister, whenever you see her, you like her, something about her, you know, you know, like her. Some kind of. Then you are in the dream. You saw you and her matching by the eye. That doesn't necessarily mean that Elohim has ordained her to be your wife. It may be lost at work. It may be your own soulish desires at work. So that's why it's good to subject these things to some forensic analysis. Or, better still, where there's somebody with the gift of interpretation, we're going to talk about it in a moment, to interpret what you see. So that you're careful. Men and brethren, that we do not just go around proclaiming things and we need to say something about faith and fear. Faith is like a magnet. It will draw whatever you believe in. Fear 
is an is like a magnet opposite to faith it will draw also whatever you need to whatever you believe in consistently so you might see things that are a function of your fear in dream you might also see something certain things that are a function of your faith in dreams so it is important to know that job said in job 325 for the thing which i greatly feared is come upon me and that which i was afraid of is come upon me every day we are afraid hey who knows my children they must have seen against him him he go and offer a sacrifice every time he was doing that and the day came the very thing was fearing came upon him because like a, a magnet his constant fear had drawn them the other reasons i'm just talking about principle also yeshua said in mark 222 whatever you say half it you know no him for very nice son to you that what self who self shall say to this mountain be that removed be that cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he said shall come to pass he shall have whatever he said if i saw unto you whatever things you desire when you pray believe you receive them you shall have them faith and fear are two magnetic principles and if we operate in faith we are not going to have oppressive dreams we are not going to have negative dreams because satan suggesting to you that this will happen to you you know one of the popular tricks of satan he you knows somebody who is your friend or a destiny helper or a pastor appointed to you from heaven and so satan has looked for various ways to make you miss that grace from that friend or from that person the lord has adored or that pastor you know the next thing he goes to the dream And somebody wakes up I saw my pastor carrying a machete chasing me around I say hey, pastor hey this is my pastor this is hard to watch me bam that day he stopped going to church not even caught you of call you know what he has just fallen into the trap of satan and in this last day so dreams are going to be multiplying people are going to see and is a function of their either fear or worry or anxiety or something satan dropped inside of them and they didn't deal with it those inner healing issues that they denied begin to be the ground to see through dreams the very 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 negative things that satan had deposited inside the memory and men and brethren let's make sure we don't give satan right of way arise in faith deal with things if you Our life is together and there's nothing and the enemy brings an accusation against you in a dream rise up reject it refuse it tell the minister of the blood and cancel it cancel it and move on don't let it trap you because some dreams are meant to trap you put you in a quagmire number 25 interpretation of dreams our father doesn't want us to walk in ignorance or just uh, be people who you know are confused you get a dream the dream sinks you low and you are just low no there's a gift called interpretation of dreams and just like uh, speaking in tongues and interpretation they are supposed to work together and one of the things that made joseph very very successful was that he could dream and he could interpret so he was able to interpret that of pharaoh and it makes a way for him your gift to make a way for you we need more people like we need more people with the gift of discernment we need more people with the gift of interpretation of tongues we also need more people with interpretation of dreams is a grace is a grace those it is upon as you are telling your complex story by the time they open their mouth simple they cut through the mass of it and tell you something that resonates in your spirit you there's a knowing that you've received something from the lord they don't complicate matters and do guesswork and maybe it is this or that or that as you are speaking the lord ministers to them and when they open their mouth wide it dispels all the fog of darkness that covered you because of that dream when a broaden number 26 visions or trance a vision is a vivid portrayal of a present or future event and elohim used visions to add the history of israel to communicate with them Ezekiel saw several visions the most popular being the valley of dry bones that vision that Ezekiel saw you know it was not fulfilled in his lifetime it was fulfilled several years later the period of time was almost to about 2000 years it was fulfilled in 1948 with the ingathering of Israel as a nation the valley of dry bones can these people live these people have been exiled scattered millions and he said speak to them bone will come to bone senior upon senior that dream was only fulfilled about 2000 years later or more 
So men and brethren, visions are Elohim communicating in vivid language, video-like language. That's how visions and trances work. It's like video, real. You can see them as in HD. Men and brethren, you know Philip, uh, Peter, that's how he saw the need to go to the house of Cornelius. If you read Acts 10, it was vivid. Everything he saw, but the, he needed to have understanding, which Elohim now showed him the understanding. So, the word trance was used by Peter to signify that the vision came while he was partly asleep and partly awake. So part of his faculty may, may have shut down, part of the faculty was open. So the book of Revelation is virtually a vision which Yeshua showed to John of the things that will be, the things that are, the state of the church in his generation, the things that will come to pass shortly, and all things leading to the end of the age, their vision. Then there's another gift that is not often mentioned, number 27, the gift of martyrdom. The gift of martyrdom. This is not ordinary. This is the gift that gives you the grace and ability to embrace suffering and dying for Yeshua if need be. And you know, flinch. There was this young girl in Nigeria, I think it was last year or so, when they were, you know, the you know the militants came and carried them captive, and they told her to renounce the gospel. A little girl. What is it that made this young girl, secondary school level, high school level child, to refuse and say, "Well, whatever I want to do with me, I will not renounce Yeshua." Did others not renounce? Men and brethren, listen to this. This is a special grace, and the people who have it. They don't ever worry about death. Paul said to, for me to live is Yeshua, to die is gain. <laughs> to die is gain. And that's the attitude. Look, let's look at three of them who had this gift. Stephen, when he was being killed by stoning, public stoning, Acts 7, 55, but he, being full of Holy Ghost, looked up steadfast not to heaven and saw the glory of Elohim and Yeshua standing on the right hand of Elohim and said, Behold, I see the heavens open." And the Son of Man standing on the right hand of Elohim. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, called upon Elohim, and saying, Lord Yeshua, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down, cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And while he said this, he fell asleep. Isn't that awesome? No vengeance, no animosity, no dangerous prayer, no heaven. Let angels come down and destroy these people. No fire of Holy Ghost, come down and kill up these people. He said, forgive them, just like his master. Look at Paul. Why waiting for death? Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. What of Peter? Peter was expectant of his death, so to say. Second Peter chapter 1, from verse 13, Yea, I think it meets, as long as I am in this tabernacle, this body, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance, knowing that shortly I must put up this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Yeshua had showed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that you may be able, after my disease, after my passing on, to have these things always in remembrance. So it's a gift, the ability to die for him if need be, to pour out one's blood, which will water the ground for revival. No vengeance, no ill feeling, no seeking, no flinching under pain is a gift. Men and brethren, have you looked at those 27 so far? And I want to say this, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, they talk about the fivefold leadership of his gifts, the ascension of his gifts. The offices in the body. 
Ephesians 4, 11, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And their collective work is for the perfection of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the defining of the body of Yeshua. Men and brethren, those ones are dealt with or were dealt with in the course on the fivefold. And we're not going to repeat them here. I want to say this to you. In other words, when you look at that 27 plus this five-fold gifts, that's about 32 gifts mentioned in Scripture. You know what? There may be others that have not been revealed to this vessel yet. There may be others that you may know we didn't know. Discover your gifts. Flow in your gifts. The gifts will make a way for you. The gift will make a way for you. The Father's plan is that you will not strive with, that nobody will strive with you. And that can only happen when you discover what he put in you that makes you you. Hey, you are not a copycat. So to say, I am the African, uh, I am the African TDJ, I am the African this, I am the African that. Some young people do that in Africa. They look at one popular person, I am the African. No, that's real childishness. You are not anybody's clone. You are original. What makes you original is the basket of gifts. Some people have one, two, some three, some five, some ten. Don't be intimidated by a man's gift. Yours are good enough to make you you. Yours are good enough to make a way for you to be all the Father ordained you to be. So be diligent to discover what he has put in you. Be diligent to apply it. Put it to work. Because through practice, through usage, there is perfection. We are going to talk to you about how to use the gifts. We are going to talk about our principles to use. These things will come throughout this week. And if we are not able to finish, I'm just going to ask Pastor Grace to kindly give me Sunday to finish it up so that you can have this together. And sometime next week, there will be the panel discussion for one day or two about the spiritual gifts. And those who have never discussed, we want them to get ready. Those who have never discussed on the daybreak with the king, please let teacher Stephanie and uh, uh, Prophet Rolanda Bird know so that we can see how another set of people will be ready to you know, have a panel discussion on this early next week, possibly Monday and Tuesday, something like that, if we can finish up what we have so that we can structure and strategize. Men and brethren, I want to say this to you. The gift that we're giving to you, they were purchased at great price by Yeshua himself. For when he went to the cross and paid the price, say it is finished. It is finished means the era where you were under subjection to the elements of nature were finished. You no longer live, need to live like an ordinary American, ordinary uh, European, ordinary African, ordinary Asian man or woman. No, you are now supposed to live by the principles of the kingdom. Say it is finished. It's your jubilee. Not only that, when he was ascending on high, he led captivity captive and released gifts to you. He took all the uh, principalities and powers and, and in heavenly places. He took them out of the way and he released gifts to you. Which one are your gifts? As every man has received a gift, so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of Elohim. Let Elohim forbid that any of us will live a day more than this week without discovering your gifts. Let it not be come to pass. Before we even finish this course, we're going to give you a tool that Dr. Lechuku developed, you know, uh, on spiritual gift audit. It's useful, very useful. It doesn't have, it doesn't contain all these gifts we have mentioned, you know, but it contains about 20 something of them, 26 in the way he dealt, the Lord led him, but you know, he was able to do some analysis, but I won't say to you also I'm going to tell you how, from a spiritual point of view, you can discover your gifts this week. I will also give you that so you can look at both the spiritual one and the analytical one and see which way you are. You got to know your gifts. They were given to you at great price. Yeshua went to the cross because of you, because of your gifting. And all he puts in you, they are not meant to waste. They are not ordained to waste. 
They are for your edification. But Mr. Gose, I don't know whether there are any, is there any questions from the Facebook Live. So we can take it straight away. If there's any that anybody posts, bring it so that we can take it in two minutes or so. But men and men, I want to beg you. This September, don't be too busy. It's the month of reflection. It's the month that is best suited for a spiritual gift audit. Do a gift audit of yourself. What are your gifts? What are your root gifts? What are your enabling gifts? What are the other gifts you have? The tools we are going to give to you this week, put them to work. And the Father will bless you. It is for your own good. When you discover your gifts and walk in them, nobody can intimidate you. Nobody, born of a woman, can intimidate you. The Father has given them to you to decorate you, to carry the very presence of the Father, to be a, a functional part of the body, and to manifest Holy Spirit in everyday life. Don't confine it to what you do inside building called church on certain so-called holy days. It's for you to live 24-7, anywhere and everywhere, your workplace, the marketplace, anywhere you find yourself, in business, in your employment, anywhere you find yourself in school, anywhere you find yourself, your gifts will make a way for you. And if you are going to be in ministry, your gift should be the basis of your ministry. And if we teach this to young people, if they understand their spiritual gifts, it will enable them to make the right career choices, not the choice of being what somebody wants them to be, parents want them to be, career people want them to be. Rather, it will be what they will use as tools to come to a place where the Lord will make them exactly what they ought to be. Men and brethren, we're trying to determine if there's any, uh, uh, this is question? There's no. Is there a gift of listening? <laughs> That's very interesting. Eh? Is there a gift of listening? <laughs> Maybe. It's Mr. Rose, please pray about it. May the Lord tell you whether it's a spiritual gift or it's a natural facility everybody ought to have and use. It is possible, but I don't know for now. I don't have any revelation about that for now, okay? All right, so please, if you are open, among these 32 we have outlined, discover which one is yours. You need to go to the five-fold book and see where you fit in. If you didn't fit in there, don't be worried. The ones you fit in, they are good enough. No gift is smaller than the other. Each one is a supernatural manifestation of Holy Spirit using your vessel. And if you know your gift and walk in them, you are not going to have any problem, no problem whatsoever to be fulfilled. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for your graciousness. Thank you because even when we are weak, you've made us strong already. And by your grace, you poured out spiritual gifts to enable us to live this life above the pay grade of man, above the natural realm. Lord, we pray that this teaching along with those that came forth on Friday and the days before, will quicken your people so heavily, impact them so much that no one will go to rest without discovering the gift in them. And as we teach this week on how to discover your gifts, pray that your children will pay attention and they will receive revelation and your name shall be glorified. Father, seal these prayers with the blood of Yeshua. Let this teaching be sealed inside of your people. Let no bed of the air be permitted to snatch them away. We say, Lord, the Omega Church will arise and become the organism, the organic body of Yeshua HaMashiach, functional, dynamic. Thank you. We give you praise. Lord, help the saints to distribute the material, this video, so that more people shall come to the place where we can collectively touch more lives. Thank you for Minister Guzzi on the camera. And thank you for those who are on the broadcast today. In Yeshua's mighty name we pray. Amen and amen.